Hi guys. guys! Welcome to Spilling the AT. We will be spilling the tea about how it is to be an architecture, design and technology student at Cardiff Met. Today is a short video with some advice and reflections on studying architectural technology. These are our personal reflections so you may agree or disagree with the things we say and that's completely fine. We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. Our first piece of advice is that a feeling you should embrace while studying is the feeling of not knowing. This is a quote we heard in first year from one of our tutors. What our tutor meant by this is that you don't have to know all the building recs, build-ups and definitions, but you should get used to researching them and knowing where to look for them. Not knowledge is the power. This is a skill that you'll develop with practice and you'll get plenty of opportunities to practice this through the detailing and reports, assignments that you accept. You should embrace research. It should be fun and exciting to discover more about the course you're studying. If you don't enjoy it, then maybe you should reconsider why you're on the course. Having said this, not all the tasks that you'll be set will be fun, but it should be satisfying once it's done to know that you know all this new information. For some hints and direction on some good sources, go and check out one of our videos called Cheat Codes. You may have the idea in your head that at the end of the three years you're going to be an ADT guru and know everything about the sector. But the truth is, even though you have a great understanding within your sector, it's impossible to know everything. Construction industry changes constantly and it's purely impossible to keep up with every single thing. This is why it's important to ask questions to your team or to those around you. This leads us nicely onto our third point. Asking for help can be hard, especially if you feel like you'll be embarrassed for asking a dumb question. But the truth is, there is no dumb questions. Maybe not sensible ones, but definitely not dumb. The likelihood is that if you're confused about something, someone else in the class is probably confused too, but is too nervous to put their hand up. Especially in first year, where you're not expected to have any previous experience. Regarding what Florent just said, um, we have an interview with an architect a real live architect coming up and he mentions a few of the points we talk about in this video. You should learn to ask more and meet your tutors halfway. They can't help you if they don't know you're struggling. You're paying a lot of money for your time at university so make the most of it, make the most of studio time, make the most of your tutors and your colleagues around you. It really makes a lot of difference. This is something we've seen first time. In our first year, there was a lot of silence on our lectures. Every time a lecturer asked a question and they would all joke about how silent it is. Especially in our class where we have about 23 pupils, um, it's very noticeable when there's silence. This is why turning up is also really important. Um, your tutors get to know your face, they're more inclined to help you and it also builds your confidence. Everyone has different levels of knowledge when they join the course. So people feel uncertain what they should or shouldn't already know but we just say, don't worry about it. Our fourth point is that designing a building is hard. It is a process of trial and error and everyone has different processes that will suit them. This is obviously variable depending on a person. There is lots of different design techniques that you can learn in order to make this process easier. An example of this is using site context to set design constraints for yourself. By setting constraints, you reduce the possible options you have which makes it easier to choose the design. If you struggle with indecisiveness like me, then point five is for you. Pick a building and run with it. The reality of the course is that the tutors will prefer a very well detailed building over the most beautiful building in the world. Although they do like to see design, well designed building and great detailing going together because that's what architecture basically is. You can create a beautiful building just through material choice. Remember we are not expected to be architects on an ADT course. That being said, we are told to explore and be adventurous in first and second year in order to learn and practice various different techniques in time and preparation for third year. It's because the first and second year don't actually count to the degree. Only third year is 100% the degree, so we can just do whatever we want really, as long as we pass.
That is specifically for our course though, so you need to check whether your first and second years do count or not. Yes, yeah, so that's ADT at Cardiff Met. It's better to try and fail in the years that don't contribute to your final degree. You should definitely take advantage of this. But always try to get as good grades as you can because that's still your portfolio and that's still things you learn. So employers love to see progression, so when they can see your first year project, second year project and then your third year final project, if there is a clear progression showing, they can see that you actually paid attention and that you actually engaged with the course and you learned something, which is really important. A penultimate point is about deadlines. In first year, realistically, you're going to be working up to those deadlines. Just because everything is so new, you're getting into routine and you kind of, you may forget about it or you might be more relaxed because you're not used to being in this routine. In second year, you're expected to manage your time better. It's basically, as Florence said, in first year, you, you're new to everything. So you want to do everything that you're expected to do during uni. Freshers going out, finding new friends, learning to cook if, if you haven't before. Obviously you just moved out of your house, so you were living by yourself initially and you would in probably this new city, there's so many options out there. So not everyone can prioritize university. We think you should because you pay a lot of money for it, but we don't blame you for not doing it. You should really. embrace the other side of the university as well. Yeah, absolutely. With second year, we are both second years now, and we can see the difference between first year schedules and second year schedules. Way more deadlines this year. And you are expected to not be late for those deadlines because they won't Wait accept, <laughs> yeah, they won't accept your submission. You need to organize yourself earlier to be able to meet these deadlines. These are projects that you can do the day before. Like you can't pull a project out of thin air in a night, it, it's just not going to happen. So with the things you do for your projects, all the designs, all the details, tutors, our tutors at least, they always say think about it because that's going to go onto your portfolio, that's what employers will see and you want them to see the good stuff but you want them to see the progression you've done over the three years. So it needs to be as good as it can because you will progress, you will do different things, you will discover different styles, you will discover different materials and you need to start thinking about it once you start your first year. It's not something you should start thinking about by the end of your second year. We'll be talking about some of those things or most of those things in two videos that we're going to record soon. Um, we have planned to do a first year reflection video when we will be talking about how first year went, what we did and how we feel about it as usual. And second year reflection, same thing, how we went, what we did and what we think about it. Our final point is that you should accept that there is more than one solution to a problem. This is an extremely important point for detailing especially, I think, because you should learn how to detail and understand it instead of just copying it from the book you found online. That makes it easier for you to detail in the future without trying to find similar details. We know especially in first year there's a tendency just to look for details that are similar to the detail that you've been set and just to mush them together. This is a good starting point, you'll get um, to see a lot of what other people have done, a lot of different solutions but you can't rely on this forever. Learning what each element does and where it can and can't be used can be really helpful when constructing your details. Ultimately, this is what the course is teaching you to do. This is ADT, it's not architecture. ADT! Thank you for watching. We hope that this helps some first year students out there, people who are just curious about the subject and people who just want to see it from a student's perspective. Please smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe for more content. We have lots of different videos lined up and we appreciate all the support we've been given so far. Thank you. Ta! <laughs> you do you. You do you. <laughs> I trust you. Not knowledge, just power. <laughs> so this is Florence, I'm Nika and we are your role models.
refer us in your dissertation. I'll see you on the seashore. So you can do, do that. that. With a nose?